Hi, I'm Jennifer Farr. I'm an associate professor in the Department of Environmental and Occupational Health in the School of Public Health. My topics that I teach in the undergraduate level, I teach Introduction to Public Health. I teach our global health courses and then at the graduate level, I teach more maybe like technical classes. So I teach a technical and scientific writing class and a mixed methods type of class, which is a research methodology class. The research that I'm interested in or that I'm doing right now, I've historically done a lot of research looking at health disparities of vulnerable populations. So I've looked at groups such as people with disabilities, people who are unemployed. Right now I'm doing a lot of research looking at sexual and gender minorities and their health and how it's impacted by their identities. And then I also do um, physical activity research. So I look at the intersection between sport, physical activity and health and how we can use sport to improve the health of populations, particularly looking at the health of, of women. I'm truly honored and humbled to be receiving this award. I would say of all the awards that are, are given out to folks at UNLV, this is the award that's most special to me because I've mentored quite a few students during my time here at UNLV. I think in the nine years that I've been here, I've helped over 80 students graduate by either being their chair or on their committee. This is graduate students graduate by either being on their chair or being a committee member. And I've chaired over 20 students throughout the process. So I would, this, this award means the world to me and I'm just so honored to, to receive it this year. I think faculty mentorship could, for some students, make the difference between being able to successfully finish all the requirements of their degree or not being able to finish the requirements of their degree. It's that important. And I feel like, you know, without good mentorship, then students can really sort of flounder. They could spend more time and more money trying to achieve their goal of earning their degree. So faculty mentorship is super important to help them focus in, know what classes they need to take, know all the steps along the way, help them with their culminating experience, and then cross over the finish line and complete their degree and, and graduate in a timely manner. For me, the key to building relationships with students is really to have that foundational good communication. Um, it's key to you know, letting students know what they need to do in order to be successful, building rapport with them, and building uh, an atmosphere of trust with them, right? This is a big thing that they're going through in their, their lives, so we need to have that really good communication and trust. And as far as mentoring students, again, I think having a trusting, supportive person, person that they know is in their corner, through thick and through thin, then no matter what, is, is really helpful for students and for establishing that mentorship, mentee relationship. Most common advice I think I give out students both as a mentor, but then also when I was graduate coordinator, is to know what their requirements are of the program, to have that just really clearly spelled out for themselves so they know what classes they'll be taking when, when they'll be thinking about their culminating experience, when they need to come up with their research idea. Um, that's probably the biggest piece of advice that I give students. Also, a lot of students want to know what do they need to do to be successful in their next step, right? So if they're getting their MPH, what do they need to do to be successful in getting a job or getting into a PhD program? If they're PhD students, what do they need to be to do to be successful at getting that next research job or getting a faculty job? So I do spend quite a lot of time with my students mentoring them in those areas. So how do we develop either their resume or their CV, their curriculum vita, to be such that they can be really, really competitive whenever they're applying for that, you know, that public health job or that faculty position? So I do spend quite a lot of time mentoring my students in that. So. For example, my PhD students, we know for them to get a faculty job, they need to show that they can do research. So I bring them in on my research projects. We co-author as many publications as possible to really build up their CV and then giving them some teaching experience and talking to them and mentoring them through 
How do you develop a syllabus? How do you teach an in-person class? How do you teach an online class? And things like that. So it's really about helping them not only complete their degree, which is their, their short-term goal, but then also get that job and looking towards the future so that they're set up for that longer term goal as well. But a lot of students will come to me um, seeking out mentorship. Again, if I'm their chair on their committee or just kind of a, a sounding board, you know, students will come to me for that as well. And I think their biggest concerns in the areas that they want mentorship around is getting through the degree program. So what do they need to do to be successful? Successful. Who might they want to approach to be the chair of their committee? Who else should they consider as far as being other committee members on their committee? Those are always big questions. And I think a certain level of stress is created by having to, to develop in that committee, right? Having to constitute that committee. Who should they talk to about being their graduate college representative? And then what do they need to do? What are sort of the steps, you know, what's step one, step two, step three, in getting their culminating experience completed? Because that's really, that's again, like the last hurdle that they have to get through in order to graduate. And it's not always as straightforward as just taking a class. You need to take this class and this class and this class, that's pretty easy, but how do I get this culminating experience completed and who do I need to have working with me to get that done? And then students come to me also for a lot of mentorship around what they're going to do once they graduate. So where should they be looking at jobs? What should they be considering? How do they need to build their resume or their curriculum vita to be really competitive in those positions? So I think that those are the areas that students come to me the most about. And then I also have students who just kind of want to talk about the work-life balance. How do they balance school and life and still being able to you know have a little bit of joy and, and fun while they're in the program but then once they graduate you know what are some strategies that maybe i've found to balance work and life and fun I, you know for people who are going on to go into the you know the world of academia how, how did they do that you know how do they need to think about you know, should they take a postdoc position? Should they be looking at tenure track positions? What does it even mean? What does tenure track mean? So I end up mentoring a lot of students around that as well, especially those who are, who are gonna, you know, go on and become faculty. We end up spending a lot of time talking about those sort of issues. Some of the highlights of being able to mentor so many graduate students as they progress through the program is seeing what they do once they graduate. I've had MPH students who've graduated, gone out and worked in public health for a little while, then they let me know, you know, hey, I just got accepted to a PhD in public health on a full ride thanks to us publishing an article together. You know, something like that always is a great highlight of, of being a mentor is hearing what students are doing. And then also for me, I guess in particularly my PhD students, seeing them graduate, seeing them go out and become faculty and continuing to have that mentee mentor relationship as they move into academe. I have several students that we still collaborate together, we still publish together. They still will email and call me when they have concerns about a class or a student or getting something published. And those, I just, I love that. I love having that connection with my students that extends out into the future. And over time, we become colleagues, whether they're mentors, mentees. And those are, those are just some of the, the best relationships and some of the highlights of being a mentor.